Last week, I showed you how I built and flew a giant RC aeroplane made from foam to take on a rather ambitious project. Inspired by a piece of technology used in one of the most daring missions of World War II, the Dambusters Raid, we're trying to get a barrel-shaped object to skip over the water when dropped from a moving aircraft. And this is the video where we do that. Welcome back to Project Air. I'm James and this is Tom. And this is Matt. This is a Lancaster bomber. Very kindly, I've got some expert YouTubers here to help me out. This is episode two, the final part of this collaborative RC Dambusters mini series. You'll see how we prepped our gear, the multiple attempts at getting the thing to work, drone rescues, boat rescues, a few fails, and some incredible slow-mo footage. This video has been made to compliment Tom Stanton's to provide a more in-depth look at the challenges we faced in this project, along with some of the more amusing moments. It was created as a science project inspired by real events. With that being said, sit back and watch what went down, literally. After the first flight of the Lancaster on that chilly winter's day, we all got straight back to work modifying the aircraft to turn it into a full-on dam buster complete with Tom's bomb drop mechanism. You can see how Tom designed this on his video, but briefly it works through an elastic servo release and a small brushless motor. Three, two, one. <laughs> That's some inertia. We're just working out where to stick this on the plane. We're very prepared here. We so, think it goes underneath, mm. not on top. Not on top. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise you'd have to fly inverted, I think, wouldn't you? Yeah. The aircraft was designed with the release mechanism in mind, so all we needed to do was to cut away the sides to allow it to be glued to the structural middle deck inside the fuselage. This didn't take too long, meaning that we could get on with making sure it worked smoothly before heading out of the door to test it in the right environment. Oops, yeah. <laughs> I forgot how big this plane is. Oh, that looks so cool! <laughs> Woo! This is really cool. Barrel away! Oh! <laughs> okay then, I think we're pretty much ready, so let's go to the lake. But then, the weather turned against us. So, we're travelling along. Yep. Tom and I just have some fish and chips. And it's looking a little bit wet. And that could have been the end. But, thankfully, we had one more day. With blue skies and calm winds, the conditions were absolutely perfect. We were so lucky with this, as with many other things during the day as it turned out. The plane was prepared and gear set up. All that was left to do were a few battery installations and then we were ready. Or at least the others were. Oh, I'm getting nervous again. Oh, scary. All this work in the air. I want the video to be good, so I hope you're enjoying this. To clearly illustrate why the mission was so risky, we really need to look at a map. You see, we needed to operate from a very narrow strip of path, hand launching from it and flying straight over the water. If the plane had a problem immediately on the first flight, it would have gone straight in and all of our work would have been for nothing. Landing is where it really got spicy though. That narrow path had only a small metre wide strip of grass to land on, which was much narrower than the 2.2 metre wide aircraft. On the left there were stones that would likely destroy or damage Tom's release mechanism and on the right a 45 degree slope. All to say this was a super risky project and every flight mattered. However, all we could do was take a deep breath, prepare the best we could and go for it. I'm ready, okay. Come right down, okay? Ready, Tom? Yeah, I'm just spinning up the motor. Coming down. <laughs> oh no, now we have to get the bomb back. <laughs> So the first attempt was a failure. As covered in Tom's video, the plane was too high and slightly too slow, meaning that the impact angle was too aggressive. But we could go again, if only I could land the plane in one piece. All right, I'm gonna do a few, I'm gonna do approaches. Okay, I might overshoot you and land on the path.
And it was at this point I knew that I'd messed up. Damn it, so annoying. It was hall, wasn't it? If it landed on the floor. I know, it would have been, been fine. Have we got hockey? Oh, no. I just caught this with the wall. At least the all the mounts are right. Let's unplug everything. Oh, half the tails, oh no. So it's a little damaged, isn't it, James? Yes, but don't worry. We have duct tape. <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't game over yet. With some battle damage, the Lancaster's cracked wing spars were glued back together, the skin mended with tape, and the motors reattached. With that, it was almost ready for attempt number two. All right, so just before we do the next test, the day happens to be the 11th of November, um, and that is Remembrance Day here in the UK, so uh, of, of the war and wars in general. Just thought we'd stop everything. We just have a, a quick moment. Nervous. All right, you ready? With full power on, I decided to climb up, turn around and dive back down towards the lake to minimize the time we were risking the plane. But unfortunately, I had failed to realize that Tom's high-speed camera wasn't ready. At this point, the gyroscopic forces of the spinning barrel worked against us as it managed to force itself out of its mount. This, of course, meant that we needed to land to reload. What fell off? The barrel fell off early. Oh, I'm, I'm relieved that I landed it, but I was so stressed while trying to make sure that we're going to have enough, you know, enough of a plane left to do more tests with. It's fun as well. <laughs> this time I did a similar approach to the previous attempt, diving down quickly and gaining airspeed. Unfortunately though, I didn't give Tom enough time to spin up his mechanism, so I climbed back out again only for the same problem to rear its ugly head. Oh. If flying the plane and launching the projectiles was hard enough already, we were at this point struck by another problem, barrel management. Thankfully, Tom had taken the time to work on a rather high-tech retrieval system so that we could collect our plastic floating objects from the local environment. So this is the barrel retrieval service provided by Tom here. Unfortunately though, the wind had picked up, meaning that the operation was rather difficult. You're, you're right on top of it. Oh, the net's like twisting with the, with the wind. We actually quite desperately needed to retrieve these barrels as they were being blown towards the undergrowth at the sides of the lake, which would surely prevent us from collecting them. Oh, that was so close. Nah, there's no, there's no way I can get it. All right, Tom is, uh, is just trying to retrieve the barrel with a quadcopter, but I'm gonna try and retrieve it with my uh, rescue boat. Hydrofoil. Where is it? Uh, go slightly, slightly to the right. If you're interested in this little hydrofoil boat, I'll be doing a video about it soon. So make sure that you're subscribed for more projects from this channel. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, rescue boat. Don't you just love it when a really high-tech system is beaten by <laughs> a really simple. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good luck, my friend. Good luck to you too. Good luck, Matt. We'll see you in a bit. Hopefully screaming with joy. With the barrel secured, it was time for one more test. This was it. One more go at getting the shot. Taking the plane up far over the trees, I gave Tom a long run up to spin up the barrel. After weeks of work and three failed runs, it all came down to this one moment. I did! Oh, it bounced! It bounced! It actually did it! 
Oh, that's amazing! So it worked. Now all we needed to do was to get the plane down without anything else going wrong. But that was clearly too much to hope for. Okay, we've had a problem here. We've lost the motor. Oh no. What a scene of destruction. <laughs> oh dear. This plane's done its mission and then it it just it didn't make it home boys. That was actually a really epic crash as well. It was. <laughs> let's let's watch the slow mo. And then the, it splashes in the shadow. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. And then you see it splash again, wait. Right? <laughs> Mate! This is so good to hear. <laughs> well, that's the best thing I've ever done, I think. Do you know what this is a top 100 that's... deck right here. When I realised, like I was following the plane with the camera, and when I realised that the bomb was bouncing so at good. the same time, it was like, what? <laughs> it's actually working. So good. Sorry to interrupt, but when I was around there, something made it go, Wah! like that. Oh, really? And just before we bounced the barrel. And I think that it could have been that the motor was falling off back then, so we were super wow. lucky to get that. Yeah, Literally, it was great. Right by my head, just, it was amazing. Fell off, and I was like, land it, land it! And then obviously as you add throttle, it goes, yeah, I was trying to, I should have cut the throttle completely, it just landed on an angle. Like a very smooth landing. No, it wasn't. So the plane was toast, but we still had one more aircraft in the fleet that could be quickly modified so that we could keep on testing. All was looking great. It was smiles all round until... Uh, James has had a bit of a camera disaster, he didn't know it yet. The super glue in the bag that this was uh, stored in, so he's got super glue all over the lens. Which is muck things up. I've heard that he's going to be setting up a patron, so if you guys could support him so we can buy a new lens, I'm sure he'd appreciate that. So uh, mm. James has just discovered his camera the and his lens, together. <laughs> basically. But <laughs> well, now it's become a fixed lens. <laughs> A very fixed lens, yeah. So yes, that's true. As I've just hit 10,000 subscribers, I am now indeed jumping on that bandwagon to give you the option to get more involved in the projects I have here at Project Air. More info can be found in the description box if you want to find out why these projects need help and what sort of cool benefits you can get back in return. Now back to the action. Tom's excellent heavy lift drone made light work of hauling the barrels over the water for some more testing. The quadcopter could get up to some fairly high speeds, but often flew too high above the water to get good results. Having said that though, it really did demonstrate that the barrels would skip a little even if dropped at height. Between each attempt, we collected the barrels with a hydrofoil, or failing that when one temporarily sank next to the shore, a long stick to really take it back to basics. Ooh, oh, oh, nice, 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 nice. Oh no, <laughs> quick. <laughs> the stick was like... <laughs> On one attempt, the barrel was accidentally aimed at the wall of the lake, which incidentally happens to be the lakeside wall of a dam. So I think it's fair to say we really did have a very good go at doing some dam busting that day. All right, thank you so much for watching this project. Uh, thank you so much to Tom and to Matt for helping me and for, for doing this collaboration. Well, thank you for building yeah. this massive play. Yeah, it's all right. If you like this video, then please give it a like, subscribe, uh, so you can see the next one, and I will really appreciate that. Yeah, Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.